Good morning, Sai. Uh, I've seen you've been uh, trolling the comment section. I welcome all comments. But I also told you in my reply to that comment that I will be leaving a response for you. And unfortunately it's going to be a video response because I think there is a lot to be said about the comment that you left. And 500 characters won't necessarily do what I need to say about it any justice. Now, the comment you left was in response to um, the video where I stated, you know, exposing site in Bruggen Gate, you know, part one, part two, part three is still coming, so by the way, um, just hasn't, I just haven't gotten around to, you know, uh, putting the final touches on it yet. I'm still working with the audio levels. You might like it. Come back later to check that out. Um, here's the deal. Initially, when I became aware of your existence, just after I joined YouTube, I thought that your circular reasoning was extremely flawed, just as any other atheist. <laughs> no one thinks that your reasoning is valid, except diehard Christians. And I guarantee you, if I go out my door now, I will find Christians that believe that your reasoning is flawed beyond compare. The problem though is, my definition of debate was skewed. So when I told you in the comment section or Bible thumping wing nuts video or you know recording of some sorts that it put on there, you know, where you took on a couple of nobodies. I said I will be glad to debate you. I was naive. I was naive because I believed that whatever I thought I knew about atheism is, you know, revolutionary. I no longer believe that. And that's the beauty of my world view. I can change my mind. I can change the way that I see things. My reality changes constantly. And please note, I say my reality. Reality is a constant around us. How we perceive reality is what changes. And that changes your reality. So my reality changes all the time. So it's changed and morphed into what I am now at this minute. My reality is also dictated by how I feel about certain things, how I feel about certain individuals. And unfortunately, Sai, what I feel towards you right now is a certain level of contempt. I've come to the conclusion that you are one of two things. You are either extremely delusional or you are extremely dishonest. You cannot be both and you cannot not be one of them. You believe in a young earth. You believe in an earth that is 6,500 years old. You disbelieve evolution. Right there I already have no reason to debate you at all, because you've already lost. The moment you do that, and you hold this firm belief in a young earth, because the Bible says so, you can either be extremely dishonest or delusional. I want you to tell me which one of the two you are. Because what you believe in is not a truth. You have a circular argument. And unfortunately for you, none of the legs in your circular argument holds up. And I find it quite ironic that you will leave a comment like you left in the comment section of part 2 of my Exposing Psych 10 Bruggenkate video. 
where you address one point, but you conveniently leave out the fact where I where I'm busy exposing your circular argument. You don't expose any circular arguments when you attack the fact that people use reasoning by asserting that the reasoning is only possible through a God. You asserted that. You haven't demonstrated that A, a God physically exists. You haven't demonstrated that um, the Bible is 100% correct. Just on that matter alone, the Bible being 100% correct, you are already losing the argument. You don't have one. It falls flat immediately. Because you have a circular argument which states you believe in a God because the Bible says God exists. That is the crux of it. The moment you can prove that the Bible is incorrect with a lot of things, the Bible is no longer a reliable source of information. So no sign. I don't want to debate you anymore. You know, debates are notorious for being something that someone needs to win, needs to lose, in order for, you know, the debate to be a success. I don't believe there's anything to gain from entering into a debate as an atheist. That's what I believe in, to be quite honest. And that's something I believe in now. I didn't believe that form five months ago. There is nothing to be won, nothing to be gained. Because you are not going to change my mind with regards to a God. The only thing that can possibly happen in the debate is I can expose how absolutely dishonest you are. And that will actually do a disservice to you. I will enter into discussions with many people. In comment sections, on Skype, having the odd call. I actually had one with a theist the other day which was quite productive. Didn't teach me anything new though. In actual fact, I taught him one or two things. And here's the deal. I would much rather have a conversation with a theist, with a Christian, that at least tries to reconcile their beliefs in a deity with our reality. No debates. Possible discussion, maybe. You, on the other hand, have a much bigger conundrum to deal with. You need to decide whether or not you are delusional or if you are dishonest. I'm leaning towards dishonest because you are just too intelligent to be delusional. So, without further ado, here's the comment that you left. Here's one. Cut and paste or post the clip of where I have ever said that man is free will. We have free choice, not free will. Our wills are not free. They are in bondage to our natures. Again, if you can sort out your time issues, I'd be happy to debate you. Now, I've already told you I'm not looking to debate you. I don't think anything can be gained from that. Um, and no, sir, I'm not running away from debating you. I just don't feel like frustrating the crap out of myself because of some dishonest prick. The main point made in here is we have free choice, not free will. Sai, seriously now, when I first read this comment, I thought you may have come up with a new, something new for people to chew on, nibble on, digest, that kind of thing. I went on to Google. This is an age-old argument. Free will versus free choice. This is nothing new. The fact of the matter is, Sai, no matter what you've got, free choice or free will, if you've got any one of those two, your God cannot be omniscient. It is that simple. Because if He gives you free choice, he already knows in advance what choices you are going to make and where you're going to end up. Free will, free choice, it doesn't change anything. 
So which is it? I'm now just going to change the word will with choice. Sai. Is your God omniscient? Or do we have free choice? Let's go back to the Judas analogy, Sai. Let's, for argument's sake, say that something like free choice does exist and God is omniscient. Jesus needed to die. God knows that because he sees Jesus dying in the future. The plan was set in order to get Jesus to die. He needed to be sold out by Judas. If Judas made use of his free choice not to do it, how else would Jesus have been killed off? Explain that to me. God would have known that Judas would not sell out Jesus because Judas will make the correct decision and he will then gain favor with God. But something else needed to happen then. Something else that God would have, would have been aware of already if he is omniscient. With regards to my disbelieving of God, I did not choose not to believe. My disbelief is a consequence of investigation, self-examination, and evaluation. You may need to pray to your God again for more revelation, because the revelations you've got so far has only gotten you into trouble. Cheers, mate. And please, there won't be a debate. You can leave comments as much as you want. Um, we'll answer it. I'll answer it. But no, there won't be a debate. I value my sanity too much. And I'm being extremely honest when I'm saying that. Something that can't always be said the same of when referring to you.